Hey there, so I figured I would talk a little about the hardware. So we've got the little teensy board there on some header pins into a proto board so that it could be hot swapped if it were to burn out um, while salvaging the rest of that wiring. Same thing for the Wiz adapter there on the back, which is how it's going to get that ethernet signal in. Um, all those black wires are the interface between the Wiz and the Teensy. And then I've got these kind of LED connectors here plugged into the PWM pins on the board. And there's 18 um, PWM pins. So that's going to give me six sets of RGB. And then I'm also using the grounds and 3.3 volt out to these rails and plugging all the grounds um, to the lasers also to that ground rail and then the laser unit has got the input there and then all the blacks um, go back to that ground on the ground rail and then it's also got its 12 volts power input there which is separate Okay, so before you get into the Rnet programming, you're going to want to verify that you soldered all of your hardware together correctly. So the first one that you might want to run is this DHCP address printer, which is in the files, uh, examples, um, Ethernet. And when you upload this, you can press the serial monitor and it will say initialize Ethernet with DHCP and it will either then print the address here or say failed to connect. And so I got an address, so that's great. And we see that it's 192.168.1. So the DHCP that the router that this thing is hooked up to, which is the same router that my computer is hooked up to is giving everything IPs in this dot one block. Um, which is fine, you just need to note that. And so let's test the laser output. And so I've modified the blink sketch here. And so in the blink sketch, you just do some pin definition. So the first three PWM pins on the Teensy are pins two, three, and four. So I'm gonna set those pins to output mode in the setup. So the setup runs only once, so it's just gonna run that, set all those, and then come into the loop and the loop is what repeats. So at the start of the loop, it's going to set those to a dim red. Uh, these values are out of 255. So five out of 255 on the red, nothing on the green and blue, and hold that for 100 milliseconds. At the end of that 100 milliseconds, we're gonna set everything to off and hold another 100 milliseconds. So it's gonna be a pretty fast blink, um, 10 hertz um, blink, uh, dim red. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, and when we look at the result of that, we see a quickly blinking red laser. So, all good on that end. Okay, so now that we've verified our hardware, we would really like to start controlling that laser uh, through the Ethernet port. So, let's have a look at this Artnet NeoPixel example that's here in the Artnet. So, um, the only thing I've changed of this so far is I set this IP to .1.93. Um, so my computer's IP address is this, 1.65. And so I just want to make sure that I am in the same block, but not the same address. Okay, so I'm just giving it a nearby address. So the TNC's address is going to be 93. Um, and then if we look here, we see that this will be called for each packet received. So this method called on DMX frame is what's going to be called. And in the loop, uh, almost nothing happens. It just says artnet read. So I guess it's just going to look for the frame. And then if there is a frame, it says on DMX frame. So what they were doing on DMX frame is 
getting all of the data from the packet and putting it in an array called data and then based on which universe is received they're going to iterate through that data array and set the pixel color of their LEDs to that data. So that's great for them, but we are not interfacing with NeoPixels. And this is just a little bit wordy, so maybe we just get rid of all this. And we replace it with this. Okay. So every time we get a DMX frame, we are just going to print the first three bytes to the serial monitor. And then what I've got set up over here in touch is three channels. So these are going to be the first three bytes that show up. And the green one here is animated. Uh, don't worry that it's a decimal. The DMX out shop automatically rounds it. Um, and so, yeah, we'll just upload this. Okay, let's see what we get in the serial monitor. Okay, so we're getting groupings of three numbers. And we do see that one of those numbers is doing this nice sine wave. So we have verified now that we can get the touch designer data on the Arduino. We have it there. And so now we just need to put that data on the laser pins. So let's stop this. Let's go over here and kind of start stealing this sketch into this one. Making sure to put this stuff in the right spot. See that stuff was above setup. This stuff is going to go into the setup. And let's grab this analog right. And so when we get that DMX frame, we get the data and we just, instead of setting that laser to a hard-coded value 5, we're just going to set it to data 0. Uh, you know, if you had, did have multiple lasers, you could set up a loop similar to what they were doing to get it onto the correct laser. But this should work well enough for us. And I'm just going to upload this and let's see what it looks like. Okay, and we do see that we have a green laser that is dimming on and off on a sine wave. So we did it. So yeah, I hope you folks had some fun with that tutorial, maybe learned something, and I'm really excited to see the way that people are going to be using these individually controlled laser diode arrays in the near future.